So now we'll turn our attention to some resolutions involving 5.7 that aren't necessarily root position 5.7 to root position 1. Uh, the first set of things we'll look at here are these uh, deceptive resolutions, then move on to talk about inversions of 5.7 and how those, uh, how, how those look. So back with deceptives, you should remember from our discussion of deceptive cadences that we're talking about uh, resolutions that go from 5 to 6, right, and, and, and defying 1. Well, now we have the amplified version of 5 and 5.7 that goes to 6. And similar to when we were looking at the cadences, uh, we can see that the voice leading is actually pretty similar to the way it works uh, moving into the 1 chord, especially in example 1 here. The leading tone resolves up. Right, uh, it forms that tritone. Remember from our earlier discussion of five sevens, uh, with which then resolves in contrary motion. The second scale degree resolves down to the first scale degree. Okay, so the only real difference from going to one that we have is the bass, which now resolves up to to the scale to the sixth scale degree rather than to the first scale degree. Right, and that's where you get that deceptive motion. Okay, so that's uh, you know. The, the, the simplest, uh, most straightforward example of deceptive resolution. Uh, we also have this other one, though, and this is really quite interesting, right? Where we have the exact same setup between Cadential 6.4 and uh, 5.7 in terms of the voicing, but the resolution is different. Notice how the leading tone, rather than resolving up, even though it's in the soprano, resolves downward, right? And also notice how, as a result of that, it doesn't uh, have a contrary resolution with the tritone it forms of the tenor's E flat. So why is that? What, what, how does that work? Well, let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and hear both of these examples. And first of all, let's just let our ear be the judges of whether or not this, you know, th this sounds correct. So here's example one. First, let me tonicize B flat. All right, so here's that example one, cadential 6-4. 5-7 to a deceptive 6. Okay, let's hear that again. All right, now let's look at the second example of deceptive resolution. Let's hear it again. So for whatever reason, to, 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 to the ear, that doesn't really sound quite so bad, even though we defy the contrary resolution of that tritone, and even though our soprano doesn't resolve up, right? So what makes it sound, you know, pretty darn acceptable? Well, I think it has to do with the fact that in both the soprano and the tenor, we have these pitches that really are just acting as passing tones between the notes that surround them, right? So when we hear those as passing actions, we're, we're, we're less inclined to really have that need, the, the ear doesn't necessarily need to have that tritone resolution, doesn't necessarily need to have that seventh resolve up. So I think that's why that works, okay? So those are a couple examples of deceptive resolution, and now we'll take a look at resolutions involving inversions of 5-7. So uh, examples here, three, four, and six are really quite similar in terms of what the different members of the chord uh, do in their resolutions. Yes, they're different in that they are different inversions, right, of five, seven, but in each case, you'll see that I've highlighted the, the, the notes that form the tritone. In each of those cases, the tritones resolve as expected. They resolve in contrary motion, right? If you find the fifth scale degree of the five chord, right, or scale degree two, in each of these cases, it resolves down to the first scale degree. And for those reasons, and, and also I want you to notice something, check this out. The root of the chord, uh, the root of the chord in these examples is not in the bass anymore, which means that it doesn't necessarily have to resolve to, to the tonic, right? So in, in, in these cases, uh, the ones I've highlighted, it, it's just kind of sustaining on through, right? So that makes it, you know, resolving these pretty darn uh, straightforward. The one exception is here in example five. And if, if you look at this, you'll see that example five is really just a reverse of example four. In example four, I'm using a five, four, three to pass between uh, one, six, and one. In example five, I'm simply doing the opposite. I'm passing between one and one, six. But the voice leading, because I'm essentially doing this kind of this retrograde here, that, that this, this backwards motion relative to four, it's going to be different. I no longer have the tritone resolving in contrary motion. They're resolving in, sim in similar motion right? The second scale degree, rather than resolving down, resolves up. 
So why did we do that, right? Well, well let, let's take a listen. I'll go ahead and play example four, then example five. First thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and tonicize uh, the key of C minor. So here's the first example, starting with the one six chord, uh, example four. Okay, here it is again with all the expected resolutions. And here it is again in the reverse. Once more. So to the ear, neither one of those seems so offensive, even though the example five seems to be breaking a whole lot of our, our of our usual rules, right? And there's one other rule that is kind of that, that, that is kind of defying, and I want to point that out for us. <clears throat> Notice how we have between the soprano and the tenor in example five on that five four three chord, we have a fifth, and then it goes to another fifth in the one six chord. Right, uh, and, and and we should remember this from our early study of voice leading. That well, what is it? It's parallel fifths, isn't it? Right, because we have a fifth uh, in in between two voices that maintains itself as both voices move in similar motion, or excuse me, in parallel motion to the next chord. But why didn't it have that irksome sound to it? Why was it acceptable to the ear? Well, let's look at it a little bit closer. In the first uh, in the first fifth in the, in the five four three chord, we have a diminished fifth, and in the next one we have a perfect fifth. So it's already different from what we often encounter with in terms of both being perfect fifths, right? This is what we call unequal fifths. And this is actually acceptable in certain circumstances in voice leading, including, you know, this kind of motion from 5-3 to 1-6. It's acceptable as long as the bass is not involved in that, in that unequal fifth, right? So here we have it between the tenor and the soprano, so it works. It, it, it won't kind of have that jarring sound of the ear. As long as the bass isn't involved and, and there's good voice, re, voice leading rationale for it, we can accept unequal fifths. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, one final thing I will say about the inversions of 5-7. Uh, let's not get under the impression that we can use these as substitutes for a root position 5-7 chord at, at important cadential points. Uh, these are really just used as embellishing points. As you can see, they're all kind of used to decorate the one chord and, and to kind of expand or extend the one chord. So they're, they're really kind of poor substitutes as, you know, fully uh, strong dominance. So just be aware of that. So, so again, that was our discussion. Uh, of, of other resolutions of 5-7.